Greetings friends, David Marks here with an Adobe Photoshop Lightroom tutorial for you on the Target Adjustment Tool. The Target Adjustment Tool is a super useful feature inside of Lightroom Classic that rarely gets the publicity it deserves. This tool is a little hidden bonus that we can activate when we're working with Lightroom's Tone Curve, HSL, and Black and White Mix panels. I've got a neat time-saving trick or two to teach you today, so let's jump right into my Lightroom Classic catalog and let's get started. On the screen right now, is an image from Monhegan Island off the coast of Maine. I like the image that you're seeing right now in full color, but this is a scene that also works really well as a black and white. Let's go there first, since black and white conversion in Lightroom is one of the places where the target adjustment tool's abilities really shine. To switch this image from color to black and white, I'm going to tap on the black and white treatment option right up here at the top of the basic panel. That move removes all of the color from this image, but that step alone doesn't necessarily give us our most interesting starting point for a monochrome image. To make my black and white conversion more interesting, I need to come down here to the black and white mix panel and use these sliders to brighten or darken certain parts of this photograph. Now, I've covered this panel at length in some of my other videos, so let me just quickly remind you that when we move one of these sliders, we're telling Lightroom to remap parts of this image into lighter or darker shades of gray as we convert from color to black and white. If I click and drag the red slider all the way down, for example, then the house in the center of this image will immediately become inky black. To show you why this is happening, I'm going to tap on the backslash key on my keyboard so that you can see my original image. And in the original, that house and a stripe on the lobster boat were indeed red. I'll tap the backslash key again to return to our black and white. Now, I'm gonna double click on the red slider to set this one back to zero. This time, instead of dragging any of these sliders at all, I'm going to click here to activate the target adjustment tool. Once I have this feature active, my cursor will change into this crosshair and wheel icon. When the cursor looks like this, when the target adjustment tool is on, watch what happens in the black and white mix panel if I place the crosshair over the red house again. Do you see how this time, Lightroom has selected the red slider for me. If I click and drag my mouse straight down, if I move the mouse towards me and away from the computer screen, then Lightroom will move the red slider as well. If I click and drag my mouse the other way, if I push it towards the computer, then Lightroom will automatically move the slider up for me. Now, I love this for two reasons. First, I love using this tool so that I can keep my attention on the image itself and not have to shift as much of my focus over those sliders along the right edge of the screen. Second, do you notice that when I pull this one down, that Lightroom will move both the red and the orange controls for me? Lightroom did this because the color of that house is not 100% pure red. The target adjustment tool in this case is looking at the color of my original raw image. And in that original image, the color of this house is made from a mix of red and orange paint. So Lightroom adjusted both of these sliders for me. By moving both of them, Lightroom probably did a better job than I would have done on my own in figuring out what mix of red and orange is required here. If I move the cursor out over the grassy lawn next, and I click and drag up, then Lightroom moved the green slider too, since that part of my original image was almost 100% pure green. Next, I'll go up to this area of the roof where there was some really vibrant yellow moss growing and I'll click and drag up again. Finally, I'm gonna move the mouse out over the ocean which Lightroom immediately identifies as a blue color. To make this area a little darker, all I have to do is click and drag down a little. This looks great to me, so I'm gonna go back over and click on the target adjustment tool symbol at the edge of the black and white mix panel to turn this feature off. Watch what happens now when I click on this little light switch to deactivate the black and white mix panel. This is the way that my image looked back in step one, when I first converted this image into a black and white, but before I moved any of these sliders. Now, we have a much more engaging, much more interesting black and white image, where I'm pushing and pulling your eye around my canvas through the clever use of contrast. Creating this more energetic, more interesting black and white was super easy, thanks to that target adjustment tool. I bet that everything I've showed you so far is old news for a lot of you. So let me move over to another image and I'll show you some new tricks. This time, I'm going to keep my image in full color. 
I'll show you how useful the target adjustment tool can be when we're adding or subtracting saturation to a color photo in a minute. But before I can fine tune the saturation here, I need to fix the overall white balance and the exposure. Since I have been working with this image for a couple years, I'm just going to type some numbers in throughout the basic panel. But if you're working with your own image, please take the time to get the white balance and the exposure right before you jump into the HSL panel. Okay, now that my overall image looks good, I want to control the saturation with real precision. Adjusting the intensity of my colors with precision means working with the saturation part of the HSL panel down here. Well, rather than opening up the HSL panel and then clicking and dragging all of its sliders around, I'm going to come up here to the word Tools on the top menu. Next, I'm going to come down to the option that says Target Adjustment Tool and then the one that says Saturation. If you're curious, the keyboard shortcut for this feature is Command plus Alt plus Shift and the letter S on a Mac. I believe that is Control plus Alt plus Shift and the letter S on a PC. Anyway, once I choose this option, you can see that the HSL panel opens and that the target adjustment tool is automatically activated. Like with our last example, all that I need to do now is to place the crosshair part of my cursor over an area like these yellow leaves, and then I can just click and drag up or down to change their saturation. In this case, I'm going to lower the saturation of the yellows and greens a little, and then I'm going to boost up the color of these reds. Now, to be clear, when I click and drag with the target adjustment tool, I'm not changing just one area in my photo. Don't confuse this tool with Lightroom's adjustment brush. When we use the target adjustment tool, we are restricting the changes that we're making to one color or to one tone, but we're not pinpointing one specific place within our image. I'm really pleased with the way things are looking now but I wish that this image had a little more contrast. Well, to add some contrast with precision, I could click over here and open up Lightroom's Tone Curve panel. But instead, I'm gonna go back up to the word Tools on the menu bar, and then down to that Target Adjustment option again. Only this time, I'm gonna choose the one that says Tone Curve. When I do that, the Tone Curve panel automatically opens. That part is pretty obvious. But did you also notice that what it says down here for the target group on the toolbar also changed? Tangent. If your toolbar is completely missing in the develop module, then you need to press the letter T on your keyboard to make this essential part of the user interface reappear. Anyway, now when I position the mouse over an area like this birch tree, I'm asking Lightroom to identify where this type of tone falls on the scale of brightness. As you can see, Lightroom calls something this bright a light, meaning that it's lighter than medium gray. So now, when I click and drag, I can brighten up all of the tones like this one in this image by just pushing the mouse towards my monitor. I'll move the cursor out over these dark leaves next, and then I'll click and drag so that I can bring the dark slider down. Now we're getting some contrast. Now, our tone curve has a slight S shape to it, meaning that the darker parts of this image are getting pushed even darker, while the lighter parts are simultaneously being moved towards a brighter value. I think I'll finish things off here by placing the cursor over one of the darkest shadow areas at the base of this tree, and then I'll drag down just a little again. Now we have the kind of contrast that I want to see in this type of landscape image. I could turn off the target adjustment tool, like I did last time, by mousing over and clicking on its symbol at the edge of the Tone Curve panel. As an easy alternative though, I can turn this tool off instead by clicking on the Done button right there at the far right side of the toolbar. I'm going to press the letter Y on my keyboard now to split the screen so that you can see a complete before and after. On the left is my original RAW file. And on the right is the version that we just sculpted using three panels and a whole bunch of sliders here in the develop module. Thanks to the target adjustment tool, I was able to keep my attention fixed on the image and to move from panel to panel and from slider to slider in no time. That's pretty cool. And once you get used to working with the keyboard shortcuts, 
to activate this feature, your workflow will get faster and faster. Well, there you go. The more that you work with the target adjustment tool, the more I think you're gonna love it. Those keyboard shortcuts to jump from one target adjustment mode to another are something I think you're gonna love too, with a little practice. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.